There are three layers of sacroiliac ligaments. The posterior sacroiliac ligaments, underneath those are the interosseous sacroiliac ligaments, and deeper still are the anterior sacroiliac ligaments. So you see up here we've got on the left we've got the ones that are on the surface, on the right we have the ones that are a little bit underneath that, the interosseous, and then we have the deep ones on the bottom. So let me show you the posterior fibers in more detail. They're the only ones our fingers can reach and actually where most injuries occur. So the posterior sacroiliac ligaments are located in the deep depression between the sacrum and the ilium. So right here, let me show you, right over here in this depression right by this PSIS. So they're located in the deep depression between the sacrum and the ilium. And they're very, very strong. They form the chief connection between the sacrum and the iliac bones. And they consist of numerous fasciculi or bundles of fibers which pass between the two bones in various directions. The upper fibers are referred to as the short posterior sacroiliac ligaments. These guys up here, right on the top here, they're kind of short. Right? And they're the kind of in a horizontal direction and pass from the first and second transverse tubercles, you know, those bumps on the back of your sacrum, to the tuberosity of the ilium. Now the lower fibers are called the long posterior sacroiliac ligaments and they travel in an oblique direction. They're attached to the third transverse tubercle or bump on the back of the sacrum to the posterior superior spine of the ilium, also referred to as the PSIS. Now, in total, the sacroiliac ligaments consists of hundreds of thousands of fibers. Now, here's another uh, illustration. The uppermost horizontal red line over here, this one over here, is the iliolumbar ligament. Now, we're going to cover that in a really important ligament in another webinar. Uh, under that, you see the upper upper ones over here, these little short guys, the upper sacroiliac fibers, and they're going almost horizontally. And then there's the long ones, these long ones that are coming down here, way, way down there. Right? And they're kind of oblique going down toward the lower sacrum. Now if just a few dozen or so of these ligaments become inflamed, I mean a few dozen out of hundreds of thousands, it can create agony in a person's life. Now if you've been working in the field for a while, you've likely seen someone in extreme low back pain due to sacroiliac dysfunction. Now in order to effectively assess low back pain, it's crucial to have an understanding of referred pain. So let's spend a few minutes on that. Referred pain is pain felt at a distance from its source. I'll say it again. Referred pain is pain felt at a distance from its source. Now the injury is in one place and the pain is in another place. So, there are four rules of referred pain in orthopedic medicine. And here they go. First, its pain refers distally. Now that means that the pain will originate, let's say in the low back in the sacrum here, and it's going to go distal. It's going to go down the leg toward the foot. It's not going to go uh, up. It's only going to go out here. It's not going to go proximal. It's going to go distal. So, for instance, in the arm, if you have a, a neck pain and the pain's going down the arm, that's distal, all right, also. And if you get a pain in your foot, for instance, it doesn't travel up. You have a pain that's in your back, it will go down. You have a pain in your neck, an injury in your neck, and it will go down your arm. So that's the first rule of referred pain, that pain refers distally when you're talking about orthopedic medicine. So now rule two is pain does not cross the midline. So if you have a pain on the right side of your back, it doesn't migrate over to the left side of your back, okay? If you have a pain that's on the left side, it stays there. Pain on the right side, it stays there. But if you get a pain on the right side of your back, and then all of a sudden you, it switches, it means you have two injuries. You have two different things because it doesn't refer pain across. It will refer pain into the buttock, it will refer pain down the leg, and even into the foot. But it will not cross from one side of the body to another. Rule number three, pain is referred within the dermatome. Okay, within the dermatome. Now, dermatomes are the embryological pieces that make up our body. And when each piece 
forms, it forms different parts. So here we see this is forming part of the buttock, part of the sacrum, down part of the inner leg, part of the inner calf, and into the big toe here. So this is a particular dermatome, and these were mapped many, many years ago. And so when you get a pain, the way it's referred from a ligament or a muscle is in this dermatomal pattern. So if you know the dermatome patterns and you know where the pain's going, you can often figure out what's going on just by listening to the person. So next we have this fourth rule, which is the distance the pain refers is directly proportional to the severity of the injury. So that means if you've got a little pain, a little injury, it's only going to refer a little bit, maybe to the middle of the buttock or down to the base of the buttock. But if you've got a really bad one and it's really severe, it might go all the way down to your foot. So the distance the pain refers is directly proportional to the severity of the injury. So now put that in the back of your mind, and that's probably something you know, but maybe that was just a review and get a little refinement of that. If you would like more information about upcoming courses and to receive free gifts including an exclusive ebook on low back pain and instructional video clips, visit benbenjamin.com and join the mailing list. Thank you and keep learning.